What's up everyone, Scott the Truck Hammer here, and today we're going to continue the series of top 5 lures that I started. I got a playlist of these going for other top 5 lure series videos that I've done, I'll have a link for it up there. Ooh, I'm kind of starting to figure these things out. Anyway, so what I'm trying to do with these top 5 lure series videos is I'm trying to make them relevant to the fishing of the season where we are right now. So it is the end of May here in the Willamette Valley, and that is when the salmon are starting to get into the mid-valley, the area I live in. So I'm going to talk about my top five salmon lures. But before we get too far into it, I'm going to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get the channel to grow to a thousand subscribers, and I need your help to do that. So please hit that subscription button down there, that little notify bell up there, so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from the channel. Roll that trailer! Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There we go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. Okay, so the first thing I want to say in this video is I do consider it very different, as you probably do too, different between fishing with a bobber and row and fishing with lures. So, I mean, it's, you know, bait fishing, lure fishing. Bait fishing to me the most effective way to catch salmon especially this time of year because they're about ready to spawn So they see that row they see that other cluster of salmon eggs as a hereditary threat And they just want to go destroy it But these are some lures that you're going to use to get some salmon to strike at those just the same now believe it or not Salmon strike lures for mostly the same reason bass strike lures it pisses them off Salmon are extremely territorial, especially Chinook salmon. They don't like any other fish in their area. So when something gets too close to them, they hit them just to get them out of the area. So with that being said, my number five favorite salmon lure is a glide bait. Now, the reason I use these is I love the way these things sink. I love the way these things move in the water, which I'm going to show you specifically how a glide bait moves in the water. But also, they put a lot of rattles in these things, and that's really critical if you're river fishing for salmon. So what's the difference between a glide bait and another swim bait? What's the difference between a glide bait and a crankbait? So a glide bait doesn't swim through the water like a, like a swim bait does, that, like a segmented swim bait or even a plastic swim bait. This only has two segments on it. So what you do is you slowly retrieve this thing, and this thing sort of swims in this motion. Sort of takes these wide glides, these big sweeping actions. So besides the rattles, besides the fact that it looks like a fish, you know, probably even looks like a younger salmon if you use this color here, but uh, that, with those big wide sweeps that a glide bait takes, it's a lot easier to get that thing into a salmon's territory. It's going to see it as a threat, and it's going to hit it just to get it away. So specifically, two things you want with a glide bait, if you're going to fish with a glide bait for salmon. One, you want a sinking glide bait. You don't want a floating one. You want something that's going to get down middle to top of the water column, and you don't want something that's going to go too far down, because a lot of times the salmon, when they strike, things like this to get out of the way, they're in the middle to top of the water column in a river anyway. Another thing you want to do is you want to fish these things slowly and incorporate some pauses between your reels because that way a glide bait is going to take a lot wider sweeps as it goes through the water. And again, the reason for that, it just covers more territory, you know, and salmon are territorial. My number four favorite salmon lure, and I'm going to mention this one again because they work so well, especially for like stuff I just talked about, a Bill Lewis rattle trap, specifically a knocking trap. So what's the difference between a knocking trap and a rattle trap? So this is a rattle trap here. This thing has a ton of bearings that makes a lot of noise in it. This one is a knocking trap. This thing just has one big bearing that makes this sort of like knocking, thumping noise. And I don't know what it is about that difference in noise. That seems to drive salmon insane. And I've gotten struck a lot more on a knocking trap than I have a rattle trap. But the Bill Lewis Knock and Trap, and really any lipless crankbait, but I mean specifically the Bill Lewis Knock and Trap, it does everything the uh, glide bait does. Just you can fish this thing a lot faster, you can fish this thing a lot more aggressively. But I mean, it does all three things that a salmon hates it makes that noise, it vibrates, and it gets in their face. So, something really critical you want to do if you're going to fish a Bill Lewis style crankbait for salmon. So, you notice how Bill Lewis style crankbaits, their hooks turn inward toward the shank of the hook. Here's something you want to do to fix that. Take yourself a split ring tool and change out these hooks in favor of some hooks that have a lot more open of uh, a hook point. And of course you want to stick to the same size of hook. Now something with uh, changing out the hooks on a rattle trap, you don't need to change out both hooks, but if there's any one that is more critical to change out, you want to change out that back hook. 
So it's gonna look like that by the time you're done. Now the reason you wanna change these hooks out. So when a salmon strikes at a lure like this, and same thing goes with the glide bait, when a salmon strikes a lure like this, they're not striking it to eat it, they're striking it to get it away. They're just hitting it with their face. A lot of times they'll just come up and like bite at the side of it, and that's when you're gonna hook up a salmon on this. So you want that open hook because they're just gonna swipe at it. You're, you tend to miss a lot more hook sets on a salmon if you have that inward bending treble hook. But a major rule applies with salmon fishing. If you foul hook the fish, you can't keep it. You gotta release it in the water. You can only keep the salmon that you hook in the mouth if you do this. My number three favorite salmon lure, and this is something that you actually can use under a bobber, actually you really should run this under a bobber, as a replacement for row if you've run out of row, but I mean, still works just the same to start out with this, is a jig, specifically an arrow jig, firefly jig. I love these jigs so much. For one, I mean, look at the way the feathers fan out on them. That's just, you know, right out of the package. But the biggest thing about these arrow jigs is they have a glow stick next to the shank of the hook. And what you do is you just crack that, you shake it, and it glows the same color as the marabou on the hook. And I bring a multitude of colors of these with me. I mean, they're so inexpensive. I got just about every color that exists. So you, you got your green with your green light. You've got a pink and purple, and that thing has a pink light. Pink and red, and that thing has a like a lighter pink light with it. But anyway, this is the kind of thing where you're going to get a salmon strike a lot more often because they're going to think it's food. For one, they're already eating things that look like this in the water. More importantly, if you can get the color right, if you can mimic the color, this thing does mimic a ball of roe in the water. So especially when it just sits there in the water and those feathers can fan out and just kind of undulate in the water. So plenty of times that's how these things work is in a dead area. Those uh, feathers just fan out and undulate. That's what draws the fish in, but they see that color and they go, I'm not going to take a chance. That's probably another fish's row. I'm going to destroy it. I fish with other jigs also, but these are my favorite feather jigs because the feathers they use, they also throw some flashaboo in there, but I mean those, those glow sticks that are inside the feathers. I mean, there's no one else that uses that to my mind. And those things, you know, if you're fishing in really early morning conditions, low light conditions, or really late at night, a lot of times where I, you know, fish for salmon on the Al Sea, that's where these things really stand out above the rest. My number two favorite salmon lure is a blue fox spinner. Now the sizes I stick to are between size four, size six. I got mostly size fives. These things are just sort of like universal size that works everywhere I've been. And the two colors I usually stick to are blue and chartreuse and pink and chartreuse. The nice thing about these spinners too is they got that holographic flash on the inside of the blade. So effective, trust me. I, mean, I really don't know. Maybe Panther Martins are as good as a spinner in a river system. But, I mean, the Blue Fox blades, the way these things move in the water, and how slowly you can run these things. Leave them out in the river, slowly bring them into you, and these blades are just going nuts. It gives you so much more time to draw salmon in, even from a further distance, because trust me, they can hear these things from a mile away. And one of the biggest reasons is Blue Fox spinners, that weight isn't just a weight. That weight is a bell. So that thing is vibrating, clinging and dinging in the water while this thing is displacing water. This like loud chopping sound pisses the salmon off so much. The reason I go between these two colors is I found that the chartreuse and blue works better in deeper water and I found that the pink in chartreuse works better in shallow water. I really don't know why, but the salmon have decided that, so I go, I follow the fish I'm trying to catch. Besides that in general, for, and this is going to be for every salmon lure, the, really the three colors you want to stick to the most are going to be chartreuse, going to be blue, and going to be pink. If there's any two colors that I might include in there are really bright red, I mean vibrant bright red, and then also just white, just plain white, because white works in any situation. White works in any watercolor, any time of the day. And my number one salmon lure, actually this is the one salmon lure I've landed most of my salmon on when I'm fishing in a river, is a blue fox spoon, specifically a blue fox rattling pixie. So it's a bigger, heavier spoon. It's got a bigger profile, and the blue fox spoons 
have this nice big uh, wide sweeping roll when they go through the water. And remember, that's why the glide bait works so well is those big wide sweeps to get in their territory. These spoons do the same thing. But you can also run these things faster, just reel in faster, twitch the rod a little bit harder, and you can jig these things. These things will spin if you reel them in faster. More options out of, out of the spoon category. But the biggest thing, the most important thing about these pixies, the Blue Fox Rattling Pixies, is just that. That plastic body in the middle has rattles in it, and in a river it is critical to have something like that to make a little extra noise. That noise, that size, you're looking for anything that's going to piss the salmon off enough into striking, and I mean, this really does it all. You know, especially with the design of the body too, with that like egg sac pattern they have on this side. These things hold scent really well, and you know, in a river system, the, the amount of noise they make, and the sweeping action, the vibration these things make, Really, my favorite, my favorite salmon lure. There you guys go. Those are my top five salmon lures. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please leave a like on your way out. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Experienced anglers, let me know what you guys think about these lures that I selected. Also, please talk about your favorite salmon lures. I want to keep this conversation going. Again, I'm going to ask that you guys please subscribe. It's going to help me grow this channel. So hit that subscribe button down below. That notify bell up there so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines and have fun fishing.